Pet Frank slide to honor the historical and psychic value of this place. Frank's slide uh, was a huge avalanche that occurred on April 29th, 1903. 1903. And it, it actually happened in the early morning hours. Frank's slide used to be a coal mining town as well as uh, a CP rail town. And I mean, to happen so early in the morning, what you're coming into is a is an energy that was just totally unannounced. So you're catching a bunch of spirits and residual energy that's completely off guard. You're lured to certain places. You're always picking up emotional responses, and you have to trust that some information is going to be there for you. We were actually both guided to this particular area. And even driving in along this whole side of the road, it feels like this is where some of the bigger houses were. Energy here, there's so many spirits that want to communicate. We could literally spend days, days here, here. and just go through all of them. I'm getting celebrations here too, you know, like little parties. Little, like very low lighting. Yeah. Get gatherings. Bonfires, too. Somehow, somewhere in there. Isn't it amazing, though? Like, this took this took a hundred seconds. A hundred seconds for this to happen. Yep, just instantaneously. That's a blink of an eye. Boom. A blink of an eye. And look how far it goes. It just goes forever. What's interesting is that it was one of the largest recorded landslides ever. And nobody, nobody actually knows yeah. about it. And in a, like you were saying, it was a, in a hundred seconds, all of this was gone. It was over. And destruction, not just, not just the homes and the people, but the nature that was here too. Okay, let's head in this direction. Yeah, this looks good. I can actually see a gentleman waving to me. <laughs> he's got dark hair. And he's got a mustache. I, see, I was just gonna say That's the mustache. Um, darker if. eyes. They really are calling us over there, so. A female energy right here, and she's giving me a quick flash of what happened, what, how she felt at the time, which is help me, help me, help me. But I'm also getting the why, why did this happen? The good, I think the, whew, the good news about it is she's been reunited with her family, so she's she's got her love around her. Yes, she does. I get three children around her, but one of them isn't her child. To sisters or, or siblings. Yeah, cousin. Yeah. I, uh, that, that touches me greatly if you stop to think about it. Because if you could imagine that you were the one being overtaken by the rocks that morning, you could imagine how you would be feeling. You'd be really wondering, why is this happening? What, what can I do about it? Is there any way that I can save my children? And before they would even be able to, to wonder, it would be over. In some places, the rock is only three feet deep. On average, it's about 46 feet, but at the deepest, it's about 100 feet thick. So in 90 seconds, 90 to 100 seconds, there would have been nothing, very little for them to be able to even imagine what was about to happen. You'd hear the, the roar of the rocks, and, and then they would be upon you. So it's, you could only imagine what that would have been like, and that's a very touching thought. Uh, I'm being told... Um that there were so many more people that actually died than the, were accounted for. I mean, records show that 76 people were accounted and did die, but I'm getting, there were way minor. more minors. This was such a boom town that uh, it was, people were kind of flocking to this rail. You had the coal mines, but you also had CP rail. And so I feel like the figure is, you're looking at closer to 150 people that actually died. Um, and I agree with that. There's a lot going on. The one thing I'm getting strongly too about the children, the children actually helped all the adults pass. Like it seems like they were the ones holding their hands, saying it's okay. Do you want to head further down? Yeah, I do. Nobody knows for sure how many people were camped at the base of the mountain at that time, the morning 4, 10 a.m. Some people may have just arrived throughout the evening, you know, hoping to be able to find work the next day. It would be hard for them to know exactly how many people were at the base of the mountain. So this is it's very interesting to hear that they felt that there was more bodies present than, than that we know about. And that is, that is a fact. I don't know why this seems to be a marker for me somehow. I'd like to touch.
it. Go ahead. See what uh, it's gonna come. <laughs> That's a little dangerous. Yeah. Please <laughs> don't. Don't. Please don't step on that. that. That'd be fun. Can you come down? Oh, and I actually heard. Yeah, I've been impaled. So somebody really got it. Sounds bad. There was stuff moved. There was. They're, they're not moved. happy about the disruption of because the actual somewhat burial of them, because that's really what it was, was a sacred burial ground. And people coming to remove them or try to find them, they're not quite happy. At least this area. Yeah, they just said they would just want to be left alone. alone. That this is okay. I mean, the reconstruction of the camp actually, because that's what I'm being told, the reconstruction of the camp actually opened old wounds. Well, it is true. When they came back in afterwards to create the road, uh, it took from 1903 till 1906 to, to finish the road, and they would have had to be moving some of the limestone to be able to put that uh, throughway in again. So that may be what they're, they're feeling. There was one young man who, as he was in the slide that morning, uh, a piece of wood came down through his home, out of his home, came right through his the, the feather tick that was on him, came right through that and did impale him in the side. And they even said that uh, when they found him later, there was some, they had to take some of the feathers out of his skin because that was how, how deeply he was impaled. So I'm wondering if that might be where they are. Because Poland's pretty interesting too. feels like there should be a bell there, or I don't know. I just keep hearing ringing. This is interesting. It's hard to get over here, though. I don't know if you can join me. Yeah, I'll try. Oh, my gosh. I just heard the words, deep into the earth I fell. It's kind of interesting. We're in a very deep, deep, deep voice. This is kind of spooky. Yeah, deep into the I'm earth. I'm not really <laughs> liking this feeling too much. Deep into the earth I fell, the darkness took over. Oof. Wow, and it was dark. Yeah. That was what disturbed them. They couldn't see anything. I can't breathe. I can't see. Yeah, I'm not liking this energy much either. Because I'm having a hard time breathing now. So I think I'm going to end this one. Yeah, I don't want to hang out. They made their point. I've not, I have not seen that pole myself in the slide, so I'm not really even sure where they might be. But you can see that they might, they're very close to the edge, to the uh, the margins of the slide. So I would expect that um, whether it's, you know, one of the buildings, the remains of one of the buildings, or or if it has been moved there, because with the force of the rocks, they're moving at 120 kilometers an hour. So you could imagine, even at that, what I was going to say is that where, there's, where they may be feeling the presence of someone, if rocks hit you at 120 kilometers an hour, if this is where you started, is that where you'd end? I don't know. So whether or not that's something that was originally there or had been moved there, I couldn't honestly say. I'm just taking a, a bit of a break. That last one with the pole, the energy around that was really strong. This man is really hanging on to me, though, because I'm feeling him on my back right now. I'm going to cry. Debbie, I think, became a little overwhelmed. She's so open that sometimes when you're just so open, you're open to everything. Wow, it's just heavy. The train replays. And that's kind of interesting because the train is important because that's actually what set set off the current to get the mountain to kind of, it was the final catalyst. The train was the last little bit of ripple that the mountain needed and boom, it all just came apart. I hadn't heard that theory before actually. I had heard people mention that, that that could have possibly been, you know, the vibration of the train going by might have started it. Uh, that wasn't my understanding. So I, I'm, I'm curious to hear that theory. I think it was in, in you know, a book that I read at one time that someone wondered if that might have been what started it. Because, of course, in a catastrophe like this, you're always wondering, why now? Why that very second? Uh -huh.